Hello everyone and welcome to English Like a Native with me, Anna English. And today I have a very special surprise for you. Please welcome, all the way from the States, Gabby! <laughs> It's Gabby from hey Go Natural English. So if you don't know Gabby already, she has a wonderful English YouTube channel, very successful with lots of fantastic lessons, which I'm sure you will benefit from. So after this session, then please do go take some time to check her out. Thank you so much. And You're I'm so very happy welcome. to be here with you. So Gabby and I have just been shooting a couple of videos about the differences between American and English pronunciation, but also some of the differences between our vocabulary, like the different words that we use and how funny they can be. And um, so do keep an eye out for those videos coming out, some on my channel. Um, so one on my channel yeah. and one on your channel. And maybe future ones. Yes, yeah. definitely. So let's get on with today's lesson. Today we are looking at the letter I, slang words that begin with I. I've already got quite a few of you coming in here. If you are a regular, then... <laughs> oh my God, Gabby! <laughs> um, if you are a regular here, then you know what to do. I love a thumb, so please do click that like button. And if you are new here, then welcome. Please make sure you click subscribe and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. So I have my patron chat room open as always. So patrons do feel free to come in and ask, ask your questions here and you will be answered. And I've made lots of notes. So anyone who wants to contribute towards the channel will receive the notes as a thank you. So let's get started. The first word we're looking at is the word icky. Do you know this word? I do, yeah, we use this one. You use this one. Yeah. So icky just means unpleasant. It's mm -hmm. icky. It could be an unpleasant taste. It could be feeling unpleasant. Or if, if something makes you feel a bit weird, you don't like it, you'd say, mm -hmm. I feel icky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could describe a person as icky, a bit but that's icky. a big... Uh, offensive thing to say. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah, that, that guy is so icky. It's Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, sometimes if I'm not feeling very well, mm -hmm. I might say I feel a bit icky. Oh, yeah. Kind of because it sounds similar to feeling a bit sicky. Oh, yeah. So I'd say I feel a bit icky. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel very well. The weather's icky. Yes, the mm -hmm. weather's icky. Um, and the example sentence I've given here for you to remember is, it's hard to explain why I don't like your homemade bread. It just tastes icky. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't make bread anymore, Gabby. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope everyone can hear and see me all right. If you've got any problems, do let me know. Um, I did set up in a rush today. Um, okay, so icky. That's a nice, easy one to remember. So the next word we're looking at here is uh, the word ID. Uh, should be quite straightforward. Most of you must have come across this at some point in your life while you're while you're using English. It's short for identification. And we very rarely actually say identification. We normally say ID. So for example, make sure you bring ID with you. Otherwise, you may be turned away. And following straight on from that is the phrase or the word, sorry, ID'd. Have you been ID'd or you will be ID'd? And this is to be asked to provide identification, to be ID'd. Gabby, mm. when was the last time you were ID'd? Oh, I get ID'd a lot when I go to the supermarket if I'm buying uh, some beer, for example. Okay. Um, like, they... like stock, groceries, beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, if I go to a I'm bar. I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, stock, groceries, beer. So oh, like yes. your weekly grocery yes. shop. Like every week I get ID'd because you know, I'm buying beer. I never <laughs> talk about beer, but this is like the perfect example because you're ID'd, right? Yeah. When, you, when I buy all my beer. Oh, yeah. But you know, um, the last time I was ID'd, Cause it's different actually in America, isn't it? The mm -hmm. age for buying alcohol 21. is 21, whereas here it's 18. Oh. So um, if you get ID'd in the UK, like, you know, that's that's a real compliment, that's I think. Nice. When you're an older woman, I think, you know. They always ID you in the US. Uh, it's like law. Even if they know you look over 21, uh -huh. the cashier still must ID you. Yeah, because some so. people just look older some people look younger don't they so it's hard right. to tell um but i the last time i was id'd was actually in a supermarket buying a cheese board what why it was a christmas gift and in the <laughs> cheese board was lots of different cheeses and a knife for cutting the cheese and because they were selling a knife they had to make sure you were over 18. are you kidding no it's true wow. i was i was shocked i was like It's cheese! <laughs> I, I mean, I might go crazy and overdose on cheese or something, you know. Um, but yeah, that was quite fun. So the example sentence I've given is actually that example I've just given you from my own experience was, 
I can't believe I was ID'd at the supermarket today buying a cheese board. Great. Okay, the next one we have here is the word, or the phrase, I always mix these up, idiot box. Idiot box. And this is, um, it means television or TV, rather. Um, I actually haven't heard this phrase very often. Is it quite common in America? No. I've heard it before, but it's not very common. And I can't remember if I heard it in the US or maybe here. Yeah. Um, I, I know what it is, yeah. but it's not so common. Not so common. Mm. Um, I, I guess it would be common within groups of people, but it, in my research, it kept coming up time and time again. So now you know, if someone says idiot box, they don't mean a box full of idiots. <laughs> they mean the television. And the example sentence I've given you here is, if they are happy to spend every waking moment in the lounge with the idiot box, then leave them to it. Okay. Good. How is everyone? Everyone okay? It's such a pleasure. Time to have Annie, Anna and Gabby in this lesson. Oh, Aww, thank you. Lots of love from Gabby here. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great to see your comments. Um, and um, if you are here with us and you're enjoying it, then why don't you do us a favor? Let's get more people to the party. So just click that share button and let's see if we can get those numbers above 100. At the moment, we've only got 82 people in. We normally have more than that. Maybe I'm a bit early with my lesson today. But click that share button. Let's grow this lesson up. And uh, and while you're doing that, we'll move on to the next one, which is a fun one and commonly used. It's the word iffy. Iffy. Do you use this in America? Absolutely. You yeah, do? I like this one too. Let me show you guys how it's spelt. It's I-F-F-Y, iffy. And it means either uncertain or it can mean not very good, basically. If it's iffy, then it might be bad. So, for example, here I've given, um, the fish smells iffy. So the fish smells bad. And so the success of tonight's dinner is looking a bit iffy, uncertain, at the moment. So the fish smells iffy, and so the success of tonight's dinner is looking a bit iffy at the moment. And you use it meaning exactly the same thing? Same things? thing. And your example made me remember last night I was supposed to bring some snack to a party and I happened to have some dried squid, oh. which is very common in Asia. Right. But I forgot how it smells. And so I opened the bag and I, I thought, oh no, this is a really iffy decision. Uh, did you <laughs> did you open the bag? You didn't open it on the tube or the train? No, or... no, no. Just when okay. I arrived at the party and yeah. I thought, oh. I don't know if people are going to like the smell. This is really iffy. Yeah. But it was okay in okay. the end. Good. Iffy. <laughs> we, we tend to talk about the weather being iffy as mm. well. So um, I might say, uh, Gabby, let's go for a picnic. Just check what the what does the weather look like? And you'd say it looks it's a bit, bit iffy. iffy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we use it that way. Yeah. Um, great. Do you use iffy in your country? Let us know. Or do you have a... Well, obviously, you wouldn't use iffy if you're not speaking English. But... Um, have you heard of it yeah, before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the next word that we have here on this list is ill. It's always odd when they don't when they don't line the top of the I. It looks like an L. It's very bizarre. But this is ill. To be ill. Now the reason I've included this word on the list is simply because um, many of my students get confused when I use different words for being unwell. So I'll say I'm sick or I'm ill or I'm unwell. And they all mean the same thing. They just mean to be in bad health. I'm ill, I'm sick, I'm unwell. So I thought I would include it just so you know what ill means if you have any confusion. Um, I'm guessing you use ill. Absolutely. And in the US, it can be slang for cool. Like What, ill? Mm, that's so ill. But it's, it's not very common anymore. I think it okay. was more used in the 90s. Uh -huh. But it does mean cool. Yeah. It's very much slang. Yeah, like, I've definitely had a sick. Oh, that's, that's sick. sick. Oh, that's, that's wicked. Ill, <laughs> wicked. Yeah, yeah, kind of similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and the example sentence I've given here is: He had been feeling ill for a few days. He had been feeling ill for a few days. Oh, get him to a doctor. <laughs> okay. So the next one is very simply the word in. Now, in some cases, the word in means fashionable. And the example sentence I've given here is, these dresses were great last year, but it's the jumpsuit that's in now. So it's the jumpsuit that's fashionable now. Um, interestingly enough, in our video that we've just made, yeah. um, one of the videos when we're looking at the differences in words, we covered the word jumpsuit, because jumpsuit... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, jumpsuit in British English is a, an 
it's like a jumper that then is also attached to trousers, like what babies wear, like an all-in-one, a jumpsuit. But in American English, you guys call it a jumper. A jumper. But and to us, a jumper is just the top half, like a oh. woolly jumper. Oh, right. A sweater. A sweater. It's confusing, right. right? So definitely look out for that video where Gabby and I discuss yes. those differences. Okay, so to be in, to be in fashion. Um, nice and easy. Okay, so the next one we have here is in deep. So if you hear someone saying, I'm in deep, they just mean they're deeply involved. In some cases, it can mean to be in, in big trouble, but um, what they're doing is just missing off the word shit, mm. which is a bad word. So we're not going to say it, but if you are in deep shit, then you're in big trouble. So deep shit. Yeah, yep. you get it. Um, but generally, if you say I'm in deep, it means I'm very much involved. So it's very hard to break away from something because you're in deep. Uh, and the example sentence that I've given here is, I can't walk away from this situation. I'm in too deep now. Okay, so that could be a relationship or some sort of contractual agreement. And you're too involved to walk away. Okay, so lots of you are throwing questions and comments through, and we have got over a hundred. Woohoo! Well done, guys. Excellent. You brought everyone to the party. You guys are awesome. Um, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please save it to the end, and I'll try my best to answer you. But we are on a very tight time schedule because I need a to get schedule. Sh you say schedule. Yeah, a schedule. Yeah, we say schedule like a shed in the back garden. I'm so excited for our pronunciation video to come out on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes, we're on a tight, a tight schedule. And so I need to get all these words out first and then we can do comments. So without further ado, the very next phrase is in the know. To be in the know is to be knowledgeable. Gabby, are you in the know? Yes, about some things. <laughs> about yes. some things. Yes. Um, yeah, so to be in the know, to be knowledgeable. Here is the example sentence, if I can highlight the whole thing. Talk to me whenever you need advice on British English. I am in the know. Um, it's uh, very presumptuous of me, but <laughs> there you go. It's true. It is true. Um, okay, so the next phrase is in your face or in your face, if you are being very very um, specific with your speaking, but generally we'd say in your face, in your face. And this means to be loud, um, very obvious or obnoxious and confrontational. So if someone is in your face, it's usually not a pleasant thing. Um, they are being brash. They might even be physically quite close to you. Usually they'd be shouting mm -hmm. like, ah, Gabby, rah, hey. in your face. Like, hey, get out of my face. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you don't want to get in someone's face. Um, it's not a nice thing, behavior-wise. And the example sentence I've given here is, normally I don't mind him, but last night he was so in my face that I had to say to him, Leo, get out of my face. And that, of course, is Leonardo DiCaprio, who is always in my face. He is very obnoxious. Always calling. <laughs> I know, he just won't leave me alone. He's like, Anna, can I please be on your YouTube channel? Do you have this problem? Yeah, he keeps uh, calling me too. I just, it's, <laughs> oh, it's hard. I wish. Oh my gosh. Wow, what generosity. Hello, Strong Wit. Thank you so much. You're always so awesome. kind. And you're saying thank you for your fantastic work with a 20... Is that 20 euros? Euro. Euro Super Chat. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know, Super Chats are tips and donations to the channel. And every Super Chat that I get goes into a pot. And that money goes towards buying equipment to help to increase my productivity and make the quality of what I do better for you. So thank you so much. That's on behalf of the whole community. That's really helpful. Thank you. Okay, so um, we were talking about Leo being in your face. Yes. Um, we wish. Uh, <laughs> and the next, the next little word is something you probably heard, but in case you haven't, the word info. Info is basically short for information. We use it all the time in formal and informal situations. Mm. And yes, just using the same way as information. Do you have any more info about the flights? Very simple and straightforward. Now the next one. Do you use this in America? In it. Mm, in it. In, in, we would say more like, in it. Isn't it? In it. Would you say, in it? Yeah, both. 
So ain't it? I guess we'd say ain't it as well, but in it, mm. in it is definitely a slang term. You would never. I just heard you say in it. it so it's, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Same. yeah, yeah. We would never. We'd never see this written. Like you, you wouldn't write this. Um, but people would say it quite a lot, and it just means isn't it? Isn't it? So I'd say, it's cold today, isn't it? It's just it makes you sound more native. It's a little bit lazy. Um, but that's what slang is. It's a natural way of speaking. It's cold today, isn't it? It's cold today, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it is it is actually um it, well it was it got it got a little warmer the weather in london at the moment doesn't know no, what it's doing no it's a bit iffy it's iffy <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay the next one is another really quick and easy one and that's the word intro which is short for introduction um and the example sentence i've given here is their names were mentioned during the intro but i can't remember what they were their names were mentioned during the intro but i can't remember what they were very easy um but you would never shorten it if you were saying let me introduce you to someone so you wouldn't say let me intro you to someone that would be weird mm-hmm. um oh hello so i've got a patron talking to me hello patron um david hi how are you um can you pronounce i walk to the work we wouldn't say the work you just say i walk to work i walk to work so there you go and i'm guessing you're struggling because of the vowels or and er uh, walk work i walk to work Hope you found that helpful. Next word is the word itch. Now, Gabby, what what does itch mean in general? In Normally? general, um, it's when you're scratchy, yeah. right? Yeah. So that is an itch. Mm. But if we talk about having an itch in a slang way, we mean a general desire for something, a strong mm. desire to do something. Um, so, for example, I might want to quit my job. Mm. So I have an itch to quit my job. Right. It's a strong desire to quit my job. And the example sentence here is. I feel like quitting my job and changing career. I just have this itch. And similarly, Mm. that's a mouthful, similarly, similarly, you can say itchy feet, which is a strong desire to go somewhere. Um, We also sometimes say flat feet. I'm getting flat feet. Really? So, yeah. That's new to me. Getting itchy feet. We also get itchy palms. If you have an itchy palm, it means you can sense money coming in. Really? Yeah. That's new to me as well. Mm. Oh, interesting. But um, with itchy feet, you can just say, I've got itchy feet. I got itchy feet. That's terrible English. Anna, are you an English teacher? Well, that's how people talk, though. <laughs> yeah. I um, got itchy feet. I got itchy feet. <laughs> I've, I've got itchy feet. Mm. So I booked my flights to Italy. Yeah which I actually have. Well, oh. I haven't. It's my birthday in a few weeks. Yes. And my boyfriend has bought me a flight to Italy, That's to Venice. Amazing. Not for him, just for me. Sending me off, wants to get rid of me. I'm joking. Oh. He's done it for both of us. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to Italy for my birthday, which is nice. That's amazing. Um, okay, so the next one is the word item. Speaking of. Yes, yeah. speaking of couples. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Nice te- link there. I see that. Um, so an item is, um, in slang term, you can refer to a couple or, you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend or two, two people have got together. They are an item. Um, yes. Not much more to say about that, really, is there? Uh, and the example sentence I've given here is, how long have you two been an item? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Nosy. <laughs> um Eureka, oh my god, I'm awake. Good oh, morning. good, good morning or good evening. Maybe we've woke you. I hope not. No. Um, so the next phrase, which you will, if you've um, been following any of my Bella and Beans stuff, if you have young children, my channel Bella and Beans, we released a video called um, Incy Win- no, Itsy Bitsy Spider, mm. um, which is a nursery rhyme. Now, some people say Incy Wincy Spider, and some people say Itsy Bitsy Spider. What do you say? Itsy bitsy. Itsy bitsy. I think itsy bitsy is more of an American English term and incy wincy is more British English. Itsy-wincy. But mm. they're interchangeable. We use Yeah, I've heard incy wincy uh, yeah. too. And it means very small. So my example sentence here is Can I please have an incy wincy bit of sugar in my tea? Mm. An incy wincy bit of sugar. Do you use itsy bitsy in general chat? Itsy bitsy, yeah, like um, uh, just to say a little bit of something. Just an itsy wincy bit. Just I don't bit, personally bit. use it a lot, but I've heard it. Okay. It's, it I, I use it a lot, but maybe that's mm. because I'm a big child at heart. <laughs> it's a fun phrase. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah. 
And the final one. Oh, we've done so well for wow, time. That's Boom, great. and that'll leave five minutes for, for comments. Um, ivories is the last one. Um, and ivories, the first thing that comes to mind when I say ivories is um, a piano. So the mm-hmm. keys on the piano used to be made out of ivory. I assume that's where it comes from. Mm. Um, and besides which, they're ivory white. Mm-hmm. And so if you tinkle on the ivories, you are playing the piano. Um, however, they are sometimes referred to, ivories can be referring to teeth. Right. Um, but mostly in the UK, to tinkle on the ivories is uh, playing the piano. Do we have any piano players here? Do you play piano? No, not really. No. Do you? Well, I have the piano in the front room. Oh, that's right. That? But, but you play? I play a little. I do chords. Okay. That's about it. That's nice. Yeah. I, I like to just kind of hit it hard and pretend that it's something special. Or hit the demo button so it starts playing dun, and dun, I pretend dun, dun, I'm dun. playing. 